You know, marriage used to mean till death do us part. Not anymore. Today they even have prenuptial agreements. That means till death do us part, but I'll die before you get the house. <laughs> When my first husband, Simon, and I separated, we decided we'd be reasonable, that we'd each make a list of everything that we wanted, but it didn't work out. Every time we had a fight, we'd cross out something on the other one's list and put it on our own. <laughs> I knew I was in trouble when I found myself wanting his six-volume edition of Tanks and Planes Through the Ages. <laughs> That's when I realized what I really wanted back from him was my heart. <laughs> Not to mention my blender. If I had a dime for every time we cried, I wouldn't have a dime to spare. And if I had a dollar for the laughter we knew, we'd be living like a millionaire. family Oh, there's nothing in the world I wouldn't give to you Everything I have in life When you're one imperfect pair To make it work There's nothing in the world Like love Like love Like love I'm Lola, the lady of ill repute. I'll date anything in a sailor suit. If you're husky and musky and kind of cute, you can have your way with Lola. Preparing these children for life. <laughs> As what, Merchant Marine? <laughs> Are you next to Lami? <laughs> when he's a good boy, yes. And who are you? His fiance. <laughs> oh. You must be Lily. Nick told you about me? In detail. You want some juice, Lily? No, I want Nick. <laughs> Have you seen him? Well, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. I told him to mingle. Why don't you go see if you can find him? Mine as well. <laughs> you have no sense of artistic integrity and no professionalism. Tom, this is a sock, not Al Pacino. Don't try to hurt me. <laughs> My mother's out there teaching the kids dirty songs. What's the problem? She, she is. is. <laughs> I'm glad we got that cleared up. Look, I can't do a show if I don't believe in the material. The material is Orlon. What's to believe? <laughs> oh, oh, great. Fine, fine. She rips my nose off, and I'm the bad guy. This is my grandson's birthday party. This is no time for bickering and bantering. This is time for puppeting. I believe the verb is puppeteering. I believe the adjective is annoying. Now get out there and do your no, stuff. No, do no, some no, no, it was never now my fault. Get out, don't shut there. Phone. For 50 bucks, I could have had a clown. Hello. Hi. What are you doing? Playing hide. Oh, don't you mean hide and seek? No, just hide. I was the only one who wanted to play. <laughs> don't you want to join the party? Now? I'm winning. <laughs> hey, sport. I've been looking all over 
for you. And so has Lily. If you don't tell her where I am, it will just three of my birthday presents. <laughs> Honey, I'm your mother. You don't have to bribe me. Which three? How come she keeps bugging me? Because she likes you. Is that why you married Daddy? Because he bugs you? <laughs> well, partly, but mostly I married him because I loved him. You still love him? Well, sure. Then why wouldn't you let him come to my birthday party? Oh, honey, come here. I didn't tell him not to come. It's just that six weeks ago we decided not to live together for a while. So he's in New York and we're here. Maybe we should have had a bigger party. <laughs> Come on. We got a puppet show to catch. Mom, please. <laughs> Sorry. For a minute there, I thought you were still five. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, I'd like you to give a nice warm welcome to the great comic talents of Heel and Toe. <laughs> very creative. Let's put Nikki on the mantle. Wait a minute. As I live and breathe. Nikki Mantle. Like the joke, Mrs. Brewer. Thank you very much, John Francis. Come on, Mom. We're going to take a picture. Come on, Molly. Please. Please. Molly, uh, would you just for composition's sake just move in a little closer? <laughs> it would be terrific to get the three of you together for a change. <clears throat> well, did we have to talk? We just did. Smile! One. <laughs> Could you just show up here without even calling? It was an impulse thing. Oh, like what's her name at the racket club? That kind of impulse thing? All right, go ahead. Get it all out, beat me, whip me, serve me for lunch, but my son is turning six and I wanted to be here to see it. Well, I am glad you came. For Nick's sake. Me too. I'm making juice. <laughs> Molly. You're going to have to talk to me sooner or later. Mm, I'll take later. Okay, later's great. Later's fine. How about 8 o'clock? Take it. Mom, juice. Take juice out. Take juice out now, Mom. Okay, but you've got to stop talking like Tonto. <laughs> Molly, it's no big deal. It's just a meal together. Think about it. So you're going to have dinner with them? Uh... All right, I know. Take juice out now. Be no, careful. No, wait, Mom, Mom. What would you do? What would I do? Honey, that's between you and your husband. Don't get me involved in that. You're singing in my ear. You're already involved. Come on. I don't think clearly around him. Yes. We know that. Willie really could charm the pants off of anybody. We know that, too. Well, what would you do? Well, honey, I sure would want to talk to him and tell him what my real feelings are. You would? Yeah. Well, you think we should get back together? 
Well, if it's right. And if he gives up racket sports. <laughs> All I know, sweetheart, is that it's really hard bringing up a kid without a daddy. If there's anything you can do to save your marriage, you really should do it. You know, if it's right. Yeah, well, it sounds good, but how am I supposed to know that? Well, let's look at the pros and cons, okay? All right, pros first. All right, cons first. <laughs> well, that's easy. He cheated on me, and he was a selfish, inconsiderate, unreliable, deceitful creep. After all of that, what did you ever love about him? His touch. So, what are you going to wear out to dinner? <laughs> Did you have fun at your party? Yeah, except for Lily, who won't leave me alone. Well, you're gonna have to get used to it, kid. You got the Ross blood in you. I can't make her stop. You want her to stop? Yeah, she's a real pain in the brain. <laughs> Dad, could you talk to Mom and Grandma and Nana? They won't let me ride my bike to school. Well, I think I agree with them on that one. It's too far for you to ride on your training wheels, but next time I come... I'll teach you how to ride a two-wheeler, okay? I already know how. Grandma taught me. <laughs> Grandma did. That's great, Nick. But you can teach me how to roller skate. <laughs> That's a deal. Well, you cheated on me, and I just really wish you hadn't. <laughs> That's uh, not bad, Molly. It's pretty good, but it lacks a certain kind of panache. Now, let's try. You cheated on me. You rotten, loathsome, despicable, philandering, conniving cat. No, you're right. Of course I'm right. You're absolutely right. You know, as a matter of fact, I think that's too good for him. What do you think about this? I think it's too good for him. You know, I don't think he knows how angry I really am. I mean, I want to do something that'll really get to him. Molly, you have been moping around this house for six weeks, telling all of us how you feel about Mark. Now, Mark is here. So tell him. I can't. Oh, yes, you can. Now, look. I'm Mark. And I cheated on you. Now, you look straight into my eyes and you tell me how you feel. I'm plenty upset. Oh, my God. <laughs> Molly. All right, look. I'm Mark again. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. And you've walked in on me with my squash instructress. I'm eating you in front of your very eyes with my squash instructress. Now, let me have it. You're a user and a liar, and you just screwed up the best thing you'll ever have. And there is no way in this life, or the next life, or the next one after that, that I'm ever going to forgive you. That's it, bingo! <laughs> well, I am not at all happy with what you did, and I just wish you could have been more honest with me. Got everything off your chest? Yes. Then I agree. You what? I agree with everything you said. Molly, I, I wish I could take back what I did, but I can't. All I could do is say I'm sorry. I've heard it before, Mark. It's just words. I apologize. I apologize to you. How could I prove it to you? I'll apologize to your meal. I'm sorry, meat. I'm sorry, potato. Oh, garnish, forgive me. <laughs> oh, sir. Look. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. No. Yes. Well, at least I can make you laugh. Oh. Molly. I miss you. I miss Nick, and I miss us. you too but how can i trust you i know how you feel i wouldn't trust me well great now nobody at the table trusts you well 
then let's just call the waiter over and order a divorce. Waiter, can we get Mark. a divorce? You know that's not what I want. That's all I wanted to hear you say. Mark, why are you touching my face? Because everything else is buttoned. <laughs> I didn't say stop. Mark spent the night or he just flew in to use the bathroom. Oh, Mom, I think we're getting back together. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Well, we needed the separation, but last night we made several steps in the right direction. Several? Well, two. <laughs> what did he say? Well, he said that he loved being together again. Yeah? And he said that he missed me. Oh. <laughs> and then I think we sort of got distracted, but mm -hmm. I guess we'll talk about it at breakfast. You look so happy. I am. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy, honey. You know, I'm going to miss you. Oh, yeah, we're going to miss you, too. Who's this we? You're not taking Nick with you, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my baby. Good morning. Good morning. Sit down. Your breakfast is almost ready. Got uh, orange juice. It's freshly squeezed. Coffee, black, as I recall, right? Right. Thanks. Ellen? Mom. Being awfully nice. No, not that you're not generally awfully nice. It's just that you're being awfully nice to me. Well, I'm very happy about this. Well, you ought to be. Those yokes are dead center. <laughs> I wasn't talking about that, although I must say I do have a special method. <laughs> I was talking about you and Molly. What about me and Molly? Well, I'm just very happy you're getting back together. Whoa. Whoa? I never said that. Whoa? That I said it was the getting back together part. I didn't say that. What did you say? I never said we were getting back together again. I said it was nice being together again. Oh, and you meant sleeping together again. Well, yeah, that too. Come on, now, what about Nick? I mean, you come here, you spend the night with his mom, and then you leave? That's very confusing for a little boy. He didn't catch us. Catch you? That didn't sound right. <laughs> no, it sounded exactly right. You're just having another affair, aren't you? Only this one happens to be with your wife. Tell me something. Do you know what you really want? Yes, just juice and coffee. Actually, I'm... <laughs> I'm not very hungry this morning. So then I can always, uh... <laughs> eat out. <laughs> Mark, whatever it is you want, you really better figure it out and let Molly in on it. And Nick, too. You're not being fair to him. Are you saying I'm not being a good father to Nick? Now, wait a minute. I'm not here every day. But when I am, I give him quality time. Quality time? What does that mean? How about a little quantity love? Hi. Good morning. Mom. Well, your mom uh, thinks we're getting back together again. Huh. Gee, I wonder where she got that idea. I may have said something misleading. Oh. Well, could it have been, I want you now and forever? Mo. Well, I do want you forever. I just have some problem with now. Truth is, I don't know what I want. Well, I do. I want a husband who knows what he wants. 
I'm gonna need a little time on that. Well, I might not be here forever. I know. <laughs> Train? No, forget it. I'll... I'll catch the later one. Nah. Now you go on. Wouldn't want you to miss anything. That Mark is going to always catch something. I mean, a plane, a train, a boat, some method of transportation. <laughs> Baby. Hit me. <laughs> Feeling better? Oh, yeah, I guess. Maybe it's that stuff that's in chocolate that makes you happy. <laughs> I don't know. Why do I keep thinking he's going to change? Because that stuff they put in chocolate is making you stupid. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm looking for sage motherly advice. Well, then let me tell you what my mother said when your father and I split up. She took me over to the rod and musket room of the Hotel Lord Buckley. She ordered me a very dry double Manhattan. She had four. And then she said, Ellen, the reason men treat women the way they do is because men are the kind of people that only men can be until women turn them into the kind of people that only men can be when women turn them into men. What did Nana mean? <laughs> Tomorrow at 7, 6 Central, John Denver and Cindy Williams take a kooky gang of hard-to-adopt kids under their wing in The Leftovers on the Disney Sunday movie. Now stay tuned for Life, 50 Years, next on ABC.